Hello everyone, welcome to a new YouTube video. First of all, I would like to ask you to, if you like my content, of course, to subscribe me and uh, put like on my videos. It's only way that uh, boosts me a little bit so that it's the uh, direct feedback that I have from you guys that you like my content and uh, also for in the future so that i can also improve my channel and all of that things uh so yeah subscribing and liking my videos will be much appreciated and now let's go to the to the video so in today's episode i would like to talk about tmux uh besides neovin which is the tool it's my go-to tool i also use tmux have you might have been seeing and uh, it's another tool that uh, I really need to have on my machine and on my workflow. Um, there's also a new tool on the box, which is Zellij. Zellij, I don't know how to say it correctly. But yeah, there's also a new tool I've been exciting. I'm going to explore in the next, in the next couple of uh of weeks let me know in the comments below if you'd like to to see a video about these two but uh yeah today is about tmux it, which is a tool that i most use uh, during all of uh, these days and uh, it's the one that i'm most con comfortable with and yeah let's see what we have so what is tmux so let's check out first what tmux re uh, repo has to say so let's see so tmux says that uh, Tmux is a terminal multiplexer. It lets you switch easily between several programs in one terminal, detach them, they keep running in the background, and reattach them in, to a different terminal. Okay, we can get already some good insights. It's a terminal multiplexer. Uh, we can easily switch between several programs in one terminal, detach them, running in the background, and retouch them to a different terminal. Okay, well... As a person that I've never seen Tmux, if I read this, seems something promising. If we also look to the stars, seems, okay, might be a good tool that everyone uses. But let's see. Let's let's try to, to understand what, what does this mean. So, we can have multiple shells running on the same terminal. Okay, we have seen this on the, on the info that they have on the repo. Um, so... Yeah, we can have different shells. Uh, we can have sessions which kind of organize our shells. It's like of, I like to imagine it kind of a box where you can put multiple tools and then you can put a label and then you categorize your tools uh, with box. Yeah, that's what I like to think about it. So sessions also stay alive as long as the system is running, which allows us to attach and detach from sessions. Okay, this also seems promising. Make it easy to work with remote servers since the sessions continue alive. Oh, this is very powerful. For a guy that uses DevOps, might, this might be a big, big deal. And uh, one note, sessions can be persisted during system restart, but this needs to be made with plugins. Uh, and plugins mostly are made with a, a config uh, file which also allows us to customize things on Tmux, but more on these topics later. So let's start with shells, multiple shells. What does that mean? So before I read this, uh, as you can see here on the bottom, I have three things saying Tmux, Tmux, and Tmux. So these is are these are my my shells. So it's like kind of a tabs or uh, uh, windows or uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, each one of them has a different shell running. I use the SH, it's, it's my shell, but it could be fish, could be bat, could be any other shell of your choice. And yeah, this allows us to have kind of, imagine having your terminal and you open three different terminals. So this is like kind of, which I actually have here. So I have one terminal and I have another one. So I have two terminals. So, yeah, it's like kind of organizing, having multiple terminals inside of one terminal. I know it sounds a little bit confused, but it makes sense in the end. So, every time that we open a terminal, we start a shell. It can be shell, CSH, fish, and so on. Most terminal emulators allow you to have uh, different tabs with different shells. 
Tmux makes it to another level. It allows you to create shells, splits, sessions, and you can do everything with keymaps uh, that you can remap. So, yeah, so basically I have this shell and I can have another one. So I have two splits here. Or I can have this shell. And now imagine on this right side where I have the cursor, I want this to be full screen. Okay, no problem. I can have it full screen. So this is kind of the behavior that I can have. Usually what I do is that I like to have um, one one tab right here for my code, for my new Vim code, and the second tab to, to the code, and then the third tab or fourth tab to investigate some other code base or some other things or to issue uh, Git commands or to use lazy Git. I also like to use lazy Git. If you would also like to have like kind of a YouTube video about lazy Git, please let me know in the comments. But this is where I organized. Mostly I have zero for the zero tab for my code, the one tab for for the the, the server where I run my um, web page or where I run my backend or my wherever. And then all of the other ones, it says spontaneously when I need to do something on the terminal so that I keep the other ones as a muscle memory and I know that the zero is for the code and the one Right now I'm using for the slides, but could be for the server, for something else. And then also what I do sometimes, I like to mimic what we have on the on the VS Code. So sometimes I like to have the code in the bottom pane and then on the, on the, the code on the top pane. But uh, yeah, uh, this is up to you. It's your personal preference. You can do as you like. Uh, one note, though, if you want to close uh, Tmux, um, a Tmux shell, a Tmux tab, a Tmux split, you can do just uh, exit on the shell and that it goes away, basically. Okay, so now we have a little bit of overview of uh, this concept of having multiple shells with weekend split, vertical split, horizontal split, and so on. Uh, let's go to the sessions then. So what, what we can do with the sessions? So what I usually do in the sessions is that I like to organize my projects in the session. So I like to, for example, have my web app in uh, one session, my backend app in another session, my mobile app in another session. And this is the way they are organized. So I have different sessions and in, in, inside of the sessions, I have different shells with different, uh, well, let's, Use the term tabs instead of shells because it can be shell, can be ZSH, can be wherever, and inside that you can have different uh, splits. So yeah, this is what, what I like to do. So I have sessions which organize the project, then I have uh, tabs inside of it, and each tab might have splits or might does, don't have splits. Uh, yeah, this is how I organize. So you can organize your splits and shells with sessions. Think of it as a library that has shelves that has multiple books organized by a subject. Sessions are the same. You can have as many splits, tabs, and so on as you want in a session, and the session stays alive as long as the system is up. This is not always the case, as you can persist sessions when the system goes down, but more about that later. So yeah, sessions is basically it. You can just organize the, your projects or uh, whatever you do on the terminal, or a connection to the server in different sessions, and then you can detach them and attach them. We are going to see an example of attaching in a remote server, which is very awesome. So yeah, this is basically what you can do. Then we have remote servers. So as I said before, Tmux keeps the sessions alive and changes in real time. What this means is that you can change in real time what's active on a Tmux session from a different server. Uh, so, what do I want to mean about this? So, I have this Tmux session that you see now, okay? So, I'm looking to the slides. So, let's imagine that now I have... Let's imagine that this new terminal that I have here, it's a connection to... SS, SSH connection that I made to a server. And this one as well. So, let's imagine that on both terminals, I'm connecting to a server somewhere in the world, wherever. We don't know where the server is. But let's imagine that we are connected. So, now I'm going to do... I'm a different user. So, the, this is user A and this is user B. And now I want to connect to the same server. Let's try it out. So, I'm going to do tmux attach. 
Oh, okay. Let's see the other one. So we are in the same tab. So let's try to change to another tab. Let's see the other one. Oh, that's amazing. We are in the same tab. So we see like we change the tab in one server and it changed on the other one in real time. How awesome is that? So let's try to go to the top. Okay, we are changing. Let's put the cursor here on sessions. Let's go to the other one. Oh, we are on sessions as well. We are on the same position. This is the powerful of Tmux. Of course, we don't use this uh, every single day. We are not connecting to servers and all of that. But the biggest thing is that you organize your terminals, you detach them, and then later on, uh, we will see that we can use plugins. I don't have the the, the plugins here installed to, 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 to keep the sessions alive, even though if I just shut down my computer, but you also have that. So yeah, as we can see, it's like, we can do real time things even with different machines. And now comes the config and plugins. So as every tool that is very popular, you can customize Tmux and even install plugins. Most popular tool to install plugins is Tmux plugin manager TPM, but you can also install them manually. So yeah, let's see, I have TPM here open. This is TPM, it's a tool, test 12K. You can install it, there's uh, like a straightforward installation, just to the Git clone. And then you just, yeah, add this line to, you put it, uh, all of this to, to your, yeah, to the end of, of your, of your Tmux configuration. And then, yeah, you just outsource it. And then you have uh, the TPM, it's also managed itself. So this is cool. It's like uh, in Neovim is the same thing. We just uh, have lazy or plug or something like that. It's the same in VS Code. We have the extensions uh, extensions thing. So yeah, it's exactly the same thing. So yeah, now we can also have a look at my config. Nothing big deal. Um, uh, what I have here, it's uh, I'm just binding what was the prefix by default, and I'm binding a new prefix. And then I have things like, for example, to reload the config. Like I have Vim uh, keys, like to have the same feeling of switching uh, keys and uh, resize and opening new splits. And uh, yeah, and here at the end, I have the TPM somewhere. Here at the end, no, I should have TPM here. Oh yeah, this is a um, uh, outdated file. It's an outdated config. But at the end, I should have my TPM here. So yeah, this is uh, mostly what I use, what I do in my config. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's very awesome. It's a tool I can't use another one. I I this is the two most powerful tools. It's NeoVim and Tmux. Basically, it's the tools that uh, that I most use. Okay, also just as a side note, I just opened a new tab uh, just to show you the Tmux Resurrect, which is, yeah, as I promised you, the tool to that will uh, restore environments after restart. Uh, yeah, this is uh, very awesome. And then also you should install this one, which uh, is always storing your last snapshot of the Tmux so that whenever you shut down your computer and then you log in again to your computer uh, or you restart your computer, then when you try to attach, the sessions will be there because this Tmux continue will always uh, uh, constantly store the snapshots and this Tmux resurrect is like kind of, uh, yeah, kind of, um, keep um, kind of retrieving the snapshot of your Tmux. So yeah, this is the two tools to go if you want to have that kind of uh, uh, keep alive thing that uh, I told you about. And yeah, this is uh, mostly my workflow, Tmux and NeoVim, it's the tools uh, I've already emphasized and it's not enough. It's the tools that I most use, is the most important tools that I have besides my terminal. It's 
these two tools. It's Neovim and Teamux. They integrate very well together. You have a lot of plugins to work together with one and another. It's um, yeah, it's incredible. Uh, you should try. You should give it a try. Let me know in the comments if you have any doubt. Uh, I'm planning in the future to also open a Discord so that everyone can be also interconnected together and we can try to sort things out together and answer your questions. And yeah, this was uh, one more video. This one about Emux, not about Vim and Neovim. I hope I hope you you have liked it. I hope you enjoyed. Again, as I said on the beginning of the video, please subscribe and like the video if you like it. That's the only way that uh, helped me to grow and uh, yeah, also boosts me because that's the direct way that you have to tell me that. Um, uh, that you like it, the content. I have been reading all of the comments, even though I have been uh, inactive for a while. I've been reading all of your comments. Thank you so much for your words. Most of them, or all of them, are insane, are incredible. And uh, yeah, I'm sad that I couldn't uh, um, create more content. But I'm going to try to be more regular now, and I'm going to try to produce more content. And yeah, I hope this was useful. Thank you so much for being here and uh, watching this uh, video. And until the next one, have a great time and I'll see you on the next video content. Bye, guys.